Hi Reddit, I am a longtime lurker, but honestly have turned to posting to finally figure out whether or not I am in the jerk in this situation, because I am at my wit's end. My husband, 34-year-old male, and I, 32-year-old female, have been together since high school and we've been married for eight years. We've always had a strong relationship, but there's one person who constantly causes issues, his mother. Let's call her Milzilla. Ever since we started dating, Milzilla has been a nightmare. At first, it was little things like making snide comments about my clothes or how I wasn't good enough for her precious son. But I had a slither of hope these comments would perhaps go away. But over the years, it has escalated to a point where I literally can't take it anymore. Here are just some examples. Our wedding. She had the audacity to wear a white dress to our wedding and made a big scene during the ceremony. She pretended to faint to draw attention away from us. I could go way more into this absurd story, but it's not relevant. Pregnancy. When I got pregnant with our first child, she kept insisting that she should move in to help because I wouldn't know what to do. I put my foot down and said no, but she started showing up unannounced almost daily, criticizing everything I did. Parenting. She constantly undermines my parenting decisions, from what our kids eat to how we discipline them. She even told our daughter that she could have ice cream for breakfast if she asked grandma instead of mommy. My husband has always been a bit of a mama's boy. He insists that she means well and that I should just let it go. He never stands up to her and it's caused a lot of tension between us. I've tried to be patient and understand that he's in a tough spot, but last weekend was the final straw. We were hosting a small family gathering for our daughter's birthday. Everything was going well until Milzilla decided to give our daughter a puppy as a surprise gift without asking us first. I believe gifting someone an animal, especially someone's child, is just completely inconsiderate without asking the parents first. Our daughter has allergies and we had explicitly told everyone that we couldn't have pets. When I confronted her, she turned on the waterworks, claiming I was trying to ruin her relationship with her granddaughter. I completely lost it. I yelled at her in front of everyone, telling her that she was selfish and manipulative, and that if she didn't start respecting our boundaries, she wouldn't be welcome in our lives anymore. She stormed out, and now my husband has been thoroughly furious with me. He says I overreacted and should apologize to mother-in-law to keep the peace. My husband and I have had many conversations about his mother over the years. I've tried counseling, both individually and as a couple, but he's always made excuses for her. This was not a sudden outburst, but the result of years of built-up frustration. Reddit, I'm so tired. I love my husband, but I just can't keep living like this. I've tried to set boundaries, but they're constantly ignored. I told my husband that if he doesn't start supporting me and standing up to his mother, I'm seriously considering filing for a divorce. But now he's accusing me of being manipulative and giving him an ultimatum. So am I the idiot for snapping at my mother-in-law and threatening to leave my husband over this? Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one, before deciding anything, talk to an attorney and an accountant and get your ducks in a row so that if and when you decide on divorce, so much stress will already be taken care of and you'll know some of what to expect going forward. Teach your kids, whether you stay or leave, that one, it's not their fault and you will always be there for them. Two, everyone deserves to be treated with respect. And three, everyone is responsible for their own happiness and you would want them to be happy in their lives, which sometimes means moving on. Comment two, nope, not even a dusting of AH in this case. Your partner should be your biggest ally and defender. Your husband is the exact opposite of those things. Brace yourself for a long battle here though, if when you leave. She's likely to encourage him to fight for full custody and will probably never stop trying to interfere with or undermine your parenting. It'll be easy for her since the husband is probably just going to spend all of his custodial time with your daughter at his mommy's house. Now, for the update. Hey there, thanks for the update. It's been a rough couple of weeks since my last post, and I appreciate you all taking the time to read about what's been going on. After the birthday party blow up, things got even more tense between my husband and me. He refused to speak to me for days, claiming I had disrespected his mother and that I needed to apologize. I stood my ground though, insisting that I had every right to be upset and that his mother's behavior was unacceptable. A few days later, Milzilla showed up at our house unannounced as usual. She barged in demanding to see her granddaughter and the puppy she had gifted her. 
I calmly explained that we had found a new home for the puppy due to our daughter's allergies. And that's when all hell broke loose. Milzilla started screaming at me, calling me an unfit mother and saying that I was trying to keep her granddaughter away from her. My husband just stood there, not saying a word. As his mother verbally attacked me, I couldn't believe it. Couldn't. I thought that maybe, just maybe, seeing his mother's behavior firsthand would make him realize how toxic she was. But he remained silent. I left the room, fighting back tears, and locked myself in the bedroom. I could hear Milzilla and my husband arguing, but I couldn't make out what they were saying. After what felt like hours, I heard the front door slam, and my husband came to find me. He sat down on the bed and sighed heavily. I'm sorry, he said. I know my mom can be a lot to handle, but she's family. We can't just cut her out of our lives. I looked at him in disbelief. Are you serious? After everything she's done, after the way she just treated me, you're still defending her? We argued back and forth for a while, both of us growing more and more frustrated. Finally, I couldn't take it anymore. I told him that I was done, that I couldn't keep living like this, and that if he wasn't willing to stand up for me and our family, then I wanted a divorce. The look on his face was a mix of shock and anger. He accused me of being selfish, of not understanding the importance of family. But I held firm. I told him that I loved him, but I loved myself and our children more, and I couldn't keep subjecting myself to his mother's abuse. The next few days were a blur. My husband moved out, staying with his mother, of course. I tried to keep things as normal as possible for our kids, but they could tell something was wrong. They asked where their daddy was, why he wasn't coming home, and it broke my heart to have to explain to them that sometimes, even when people love each other, they can't always live together. I found out from a mutual friend that my husband had been confiding in his mother about our marital problems for years. She had been filling his head with lies, telling him that I was controlling and manipulative, that I was trying to keep him away from his family. It hurt to know that he had been sharing our private issues with her, but it also made sense. She had always had a hold on him, and he had never been able to break free. A week after he moved out, my husband showed up at the house unexpectedly. He looked terrible, like he hadn't slept in days. He asked if we could talk, and I hesitantly agreed. We sat down at the kitchen table, and he started to cry. He apologized for not standing up for me, for letting his mother control him for so long. He said that he had been doing a lot of thinking, and he realized that he had been putting his mother's needs before his own family's. He promised to start setting boundaries with her, to put me and our children first. I wanted to believe him, but I was scared. I had heard these promises before and nothing had ever changed. But I also knew that I still loved him and I wanted to give our marriage a chance. We agreed to start couples therapy, to work on our communication and boundary setting. It hasn't been easy and there have been setbacks, but we're trying. My husband has started standing up to his mother more and while she hasn't taken it well, he's holding firm. I wish I could say that everything is perfect now, but that would be a lie. We still have a long way to go, and I don't know if our marriage will survive in the long run. But for now, we're taking things one day at a time, trying to heal and rebuild our relationship. Looking back, I realize that my husband's relationship with his mother has always been complicated. He once told me that when he was a kid, his father left, and his mother relied on him heavily for emotional support. He felt responsible for her happiness, and that carried over into adulthood. It doesn't excuse his behavior, but it helps me understand it a little better. As for Milzilla, she's still a part of our lives, but we're setting clear boundaries. We've limited her visits and made it clear that any disrespect towards me or our parenting decisions will not be tolerated. It's a work in progress, but it's a start. I know that our story doesn't have a neat, tidy ending. Life rarely does. But I'm hopeful that with time, patience, and a lot of hard work, my husband and I can build a stronger, healthier relationship. One that puts our family first. Thanks for reading and for all of your support. It means more than you know. Am I the idiot for refusing to pay for my younger stepson's wedding after he's been nothing but rude to me? I have two stepsons, 27-year-old male and 30-year-old male. Their father and I have been married for 10 years and maintain largely separate finances. 
I also have two biological children, 20-year-old female and 23-year-old male. My husband is in management and I'm an RN. We make similar salaries. We generally each buy for our own children, pay for our own children for dinners out, etc. I'm very close to my older stepson. In fact, he calls me mom, and I refer to him as my son. He's married to an amazing woman who I have a similar relationship with. Her mom died when she was 12, and she spent the rest of her childhood bouncing from one relative to another. I love them both. When older stepson got married, they paid for their own wedding. Daughter-in-law is a bigger girl, not used to wearing dresses. She had several tearful appointments, which I was invited to, where she hated everything she tried on. I got the seamstress who sewed pageant dresses for my daughter to come to an appointment with us. She was able to point us towards a different style of dress, corset, which was much more flattering, and ended up sewing a beautiful dress and shawl, making a veil and matching bouquet that was over their budget. But I paid the difference. I also paid the difference between the cake they could afford and the one daughter-in-law wanted. Guess how I knew? Right because she invited me to the cake tasting. I also paid something towards catering because daughter-in-law had her heart set on chocolate-covered strawberries and they weren't available with the cheapest packages. Again, I went with her to meet with the caterer. Best I remember, I covered about $3,000, $4,000. I didn't pay it all at once, so I really don't remember exactly how much it was. Younger stepson and I have a cordial but much cooler relationship. He's never been super rude to me, but he's made it very clear that he doesn't like me. He has never spoken to me first in the 10 years we've known each other. If I address him and he has to answer, I get as few words as he can politely manage. If he can pretend like he didn't hear me and avoid speaking to me at all, he will. Mostly, he just ignores me as much as possible. His girlfriend, now fiancé, is the same way. They've also made it clear that their future children will not call me grandma because I'm not. I can't understand why you want to be hurtful about hypothetical grandchildren, but I've long ago decided to just let things be between us. The only time his fiancé ever spoke to me first was when she asked me at dinner in a crowded restaurant how much money I intended to contribute to their wedding because she and her mom are working out the budget. I told her the truth, which is that it hadn't even occurred to me that they might expect me to, so I hadn't really given it any thought. She asked when I might have an idea because they need to decide on a venue and book something. I told her that they should pick their venue and plan their budget without the expectation of a contribution from me. Younger stepson then said, I told you not to ask her. She gives money according to who kisses her a dollar dollar. It is true that I exchange gifts with my older stepson and his wife for holidays, but that's a two-way street. I buy them birthday and Christmas gifts, but they do the same for me. Younger stepson's dad gets him and his fiance presents, but I don't. They get his dad gifts, but not me. So am I the idiot for treating them differently because I have very different relationships with them? Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. Not the idiot. In fairness to stepson, it would seem he didn't plan on asking OP for money. He had told his wife not to. However, his fiancé has no issue with completely disregarding his wishes about who he sees as family and sticking her hand out for OP's money. That is not going to be a marriage of happiness and consideration. That is stepson's problem, and OP should stay out of it completely. But the stepson is wrong to blame it on kissing butt. The flip side of estranging yourself from someone and treating them like an unwelcome outsider is that you don't get to demand the benefits of family. Comment 2. Not the idiot and wow they are difficult to be around. The entitlement is beaming all the way to here. They sound entitled, young, and lack insight on how authentic relationships are created. Where is your husband in regards to this exchange? Did he point out that finances are to be discussed with him and not during this meal? Did he respond to the kiss butt comment? The son may be out of line since his attitude was never addressed in the past. You keep loving on your older stepson and wife. They are gems. We are on earth for a limited time, so soak in the goodness they bring. Now, for the update. Hey everyone, it's been a while since my last post and a lot has happened in the past three months. After the incident at the restaurant, things between my younger stepson, his fiance and I remained tense. We barely spoke, and when we did, it was short and awkward. I tried to be cordial, but they made it clear they wanted nothing to do with me. Meanwhile, my relationship with my older stepson and daughter-in-law continued to grow. We spent more time together, going out to dinners and having them over. During one of these dinners, 
My daughter-in-law confided in me that she was pregnant. I was overjoyed for them and offered to help in any way I could. A few weeks later, my husband sat me down for a serious talk. He revealed that his company was going through major financial troubles and layoffs were imminent. If he lost his job, we'd struggle to make ends meet on just my salary. I was shocked but tried to stay positive, assuring him we'd get through this together. The stress started taking a toll on our marriage. We argued more, mostly about money and his distant relationship with my biological children. I felt he wasn't making an effort with them while he thought I was too generous with my older stepson and daughter-in-law. Things came to a head when my younger stepson and his fiance announced they were moving up their wedding date to just six weeks away. They claimed it was because a venue had a last minute cancellation, but I suspected it was a dig at us, knowing we were struggling financially. My husband and I fought about whether to contribute money we didn't really have. In the heat of the moment, I blurted out that I had helped pay for my older stepson's wedding. He was furious I had never told him and spent our joint savings without discussing it first. I tried to explain it wasn't all at once, but he wasn't having it. For a tense couple weeks, I wasn't sure our marriage would survive. We barely spoke except to argue. My older stepson, sensing something was wrong, finally confronted me. I broke down and told him everything. The next day he showed up at our house and asked to speak with his dad privately. I don't know exactly what was said, but when they emerged an hour later, my husband hugged me and apologized for overreacting. He admitted he was just scared and taking it out on me. My older stepson also handed us a check, insisting we accept it. He and his wife had been saving to buy a house, but wanted to pay us back for the wedding help first. We tried to refuse, but he insisted, saying we were family and that's what family does. I burst into tears, so touched by the gesture. It was the wake-up call my husband needed to mend fences with my biological children, too. He's been making more of an effort and things have improved, We've also been open about our financial situation, which has brought us closer as we work together as a team. As for my younger stepson, he and his fiance had a small, simple ceremony, which we attended, but did not contribute to financially. It was awkward, but civil. I doubt we'll ever be close, but I've accepted it. In the end, this rough patch showed me who my real family is. My husband, children, older stepson, and daughter-in-law. And with a grandbaby on the way, I'm excited for the next chapter, whatever it may bring. Thanks for reading and all your support. Am I the idiot for dumping my fiancé after his mom criticized my looks and he did nothing? We've been together for four years and got engaged early this year. His mom lives in a different state from us, so I've only spoken to her through texts and occasional FaceTimes, and she seemed really nice. We plan to visit his parents this month and meet up with some mutual old friends who also live there. When we arrived... She hugged me, but suddenly looked really shocked. She said I was a bit taller than she expected, which was fine because I get that a lot. I tend to look shorter in pictures for whatever reason. But then she goes ahead to say that my fiancé, let's call him Kevin, usually goes for smaller women. In quote, women more like her size. I was taken aback. I immediately got strange vibes from her, but tried to push it away. I just thought it was a generational thing. I know older folks love pointing out weight height on women. Mind you, I don't even think I'll be considered that tall. I'm 5'6", but she was clearly smaller than me by a few inches. Anyways, we're unloading the snacks we brought onto the table when she asks me to help her tighten her dress. It was one of those dresses with crisscross fastens at the back. It was a bit of a struggle to tighten the strings, and she just started shouting. It must be the breasts. The dress hates them, but the men love them. When she didn't get a reaction, she asked Kevin, isn't that right? You, their last name, men love a full rack. Remember how excited you were with Lexi? I couldn't even believe it. I am not big chested in any way. And she just compared my breasts with his exes. Kevin didn't even try to say anything to defend me. He just sat there. To make it even worse, she kept saying how I was the first dark haired girl she's seen her son with. She's blonde and kept talking about how men always go for women that look like their mothers the whole night. I told him how uncomfortable it made me feel, and he said I was overreacting and that she's kinda right. Kinda right? What do you mean, kinda right? How am I meant to move on knowing I'm not even his type, and his mom clearly has a weird thing for her son? He's been acting like he doesn't notice what his mom is saying and how it's been affecting me. 
I'm very shocked. I don't think I've ever really been insecure about my features, but they're both just making me second guess myself. She even showed me their picture albums to show me how cute Kevin was as a baby, but she just ended up showing me pictures of herself when she was younger and very delicate. She also showed me her labor pictures, and when she was pregnant with Kevin, saying that all the nurses were shocked by how tiny she was while being fully pregnant. And she said it was a shame that that might end with her giving birth, because Kevin and I were big. I finally broke and told her and my fiancé that she could be the person to marry him since she's obsessed with him. I called one of our mutual friends and Ubered to their place. Now, a few hours later, Kevin, some of our friends, and his annoying mother keep calling and texting, saying I overreacted and I was very rude. Kevin even sent a long text saying I always blow things out of proportion and she was just having some fun. She's been indirectly calling me a fat, gigantic, and ugly creature, and the two men have just been giggling. But when I return the energy, I'm all of a sudden the bad guy? This isn't like him at all. I need advice, please. Has anyone experienced similar mother-in-law hate or animosity? And do you think I overreacted? Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one, not the idiot. I understand the story you were told. I was too uncomfortable to stay. His mother even asked him for his opinion of her breasts, and it only got more uncomfortable from there. Thank you for checking on me, but that situation was just more than I want to be a bystander to. Comment two. Not the idiot. Do not marry him. You told him you were uncomfortable, and he didn't care. He is a full-on mama's boy, and that isn't going to change, even if he says he will change. It's a lie. It's not an on and off switch. Now, for the update. Hey, everyone. Thanks for reading my previous post and offering your support. It's been a rough few days since I last updated, and I've got a lot to share. After spending the night at my friend's place, I decided to head back to Kevin's parents' house to try and smooth things over. I figured maybe we could all sit down and have a calm, rational discussion about what happened. Boy, was I wrong. When I arrived, Kevin's mom was waiting for me at the door with a smug look on her face. She invited me inside, but as soon as I stepped foot in the house, she started laying into me. She said that I had embarrassed her in front of her friends and family, and that I had no right to speak to her the way I did. She also made some snide comments about how I wasn't good enough for her son, and how he could do so much better. I tried to stay calm and explain my side of the story, but she just wouldn't listen. She kept interrupting me and twisting my words around, making it seem like I was the one in the wrong. Kevin just sat there silently, not saying a word in my defense. It was like he had completely checked out of the conversation. Things only got worse from there. Kevin's mom started bringing up old arguments and grievances that I thought we had already resolved. She accused me of being selfish and ungrateful and said that I had never appreciated all the things she had done for me. I was completely blindsided by her accusations and I had no idea where they were coming from. As the argument escalated, Kevin finally spoke up but not in the way I had hoped. He said that he agreed with his mom and that I needed to apologize for my behavior. He said that I had been disrespectful and out of line and that I needed to make things right. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. After everything that had happened, after all the hurtful things his mom had said to me he was taking her side, I felt like I had been punched in the gut. I tried to reason with him, to remind him of all the times his mom had crossed the line and made me feel uncomfortable, but he just wouldn't listen. He said that I was being too sensitive and that I needed to learn to take a joke. That's when I realized that this wasn't just about his mom's behavior. This was about Kevin's inability to stand up for me and defend our relationship. He had always been a bit of a mama's boy, but I had never realized just how deep that bond went. I knew then that I had a decision to make. I could either stay and try to work things out with Kevin and his mom, or I could walk away and start fresh on my own. It was a gut-wrenching choice, but in the end, I knew what I had to do. I packed my bags and left that night, leaving behind a stunned Kevin and his equally shocked mother. I knew that I deserved better than to be treated like a second-class citizen in my own relationship, and I wasn't going to settle for anything less. Since then, I've been staying with friends and trying to figure out my next steps. It hasn't been easy, but I know that I made the right choice for myself. I'm not sure what the future holds, but I know that I'm strong enough to face whatever comes my way. 
Thanks again for all your support and advice. It means the world to me to know that I'm not alone in this. Until next time, take care of yourselves. If you liked this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.